Dr. Lisa Meitner was quite remarkable because she was the only woman working at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin, and that was the top scientific research institute really in the world at that time. That in itself was unusual because women were barely allowed to go to you know, graduate school, and she had been so brilliant that she'd just gotten waivers and sort of been allowed to come along, but, but always fighting these tremendous battles. They didn't give her a lab up in the regular lab area like everyone else. They, they literally gave her a lab in the basement, in the workroom, where the janitors stored their mops. So she was facing, you know, all the barriers you'd expect and more. And she allied herself with a scientist named Otto Hahn, and you know people may know that name because he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1944 for the discovery of nuclear fission. What people don't know is that Lisa Meitner actually discovered nuclear fission. He didn't even know what they had done. They were working together, and because she was Jewish, they were they didn't put her name on the published papers because this was the 30s in Berlin and the Nazis were in power and there was a tremendous resentment about the idea of Jewish science. So if you had a Jewish name on a paper, it would be immediately discredited. So her name wasn't on the papers that were published. She was there in her little basement workshop and all of her colleagues, male, kept saying, oh, you'll be fine, you know, don't worry. We'll protect you. You're working at this very high level in this research institute. No one's going to touch you. You're too important and too significant. And of course, when Austria was annexed, which is, she was Austrian, she had to leave in six hours. And no one stepped up to protect her. She left within minutes of being carried off to the camps. But then what happened was that Otto Hahn, with whom she was working, couldn't do his work without her. So he would send the results of the experiments by courier, by postcard, to her where she'd fled. She was in Sweden, not sure where she was going to go. And it was at that time that she recognized that one of these experiments, which he couldn't understand, he was completely baffled, and she realized that what had happened was that the atom had been split. So all of that was fascinating to me. But I got to a point, um, I was reading mostly primary sources. I was reading her letters and her diaries. And there was a, a moment that I found almost tragic, which was in 1944 when Otto Hahn came to accept the Nobel Prize. She was in the audience and she writes in her diaries, I just wish he had mentioned my name. I just wish he had thanked me. I recognize that both the longing to be recognized and also the way that she steeled herself against the fact that she wasn't getting any credit. And I saw every woman I've ever known who's had a great idea that was then repeated by a man and off they went to get the credit. Rosalind Franklin, who most people think should have gotten the Nobel Prize for the sequencing of DNA, women whose work was attributed to their husbands. I mean, Marie Curie, basically they just thought it was Pierre who was the genius and she was the wife. And so I recognized a very contemporary story in, in that moment for her. And I felt like this, this was not some character in the, in the 30s that had no reference to me. Um, I felt like this was a character I understood really, really well. So I kind of imagined what, uh, what would have happened if she had been given the credit she deserved. And I got really interested in telling her story, partly because I think she should be given the Nobel Prize. And I kind of hope that this will stir up that kind of reaction, and that will make her name more widely known.
Hachette.